I found a black envelope with a white skull on my nightstand. Shortly after, a ticking started against my window. Written by Secure Profile 7830. So, let's start with the least interesting part. Yesterday, Thursday around 1900, I came home from a long day at work. It was already dark. After watching TV for an hour or two, I started getting really tired, so I decided that it was time to go to bed. When I entered my room, my eyes fell on my nightstand. There was an envelope there. Not just an ordinary envelope. It was a pitch black envelope with a white skull on it. I felt a shiver run down my spine. I live alone, so I'm the only one that has keys for this house. Also, the envelope certainly wasn't mine. I checked the house for any signs of burglary, but I couldn't find any. All windows and the back door were fully closed and locked. The front door had also been locked when I came home from work. I couldn't get my head around how this envelope ended up on my nightstand, but despite my confusion and fear, I needed to open it. So I did. It was handwritten, and this is what it said. Hello there. Do you remember all those times you were scared when trying to fall asleep? Scared that something might crawl through your window in the middle of the night, or that you would suddenly hear a knock on your door which isn't coming from your parents? Or maybe you were scared that that thing under your bed might creep out, not realizing that that thing under your bed wouldn't bother to show itself. It would rather just grab your ankles and pull you under the bed so that it can eat you alive. Your parents always said that you would be fine and that there was nothing to worry about. That was a lie. They forgot about me. I'm the car you didn't see. The virus that almost killed you, even though you didn't notice a thing. I'm that lightning bolt which almost took your plane down. That heart attack that you narrowly escaped. That shadow in the corner of your room. Still naive as you are, you believed your parents and so you tried to relax and eventually you started botherless sleep every time again. Now, you probably think that I'm kidding because you are old enough to know that there is nothing under your bed and that there will be no one at your bedroom door tonight. That's true. Both things are not the case. I have much better and scarier ways to enter your room. I've used a lot of different methods in the past. I've been there hundreds of times to watch you sleep without your knowing that I was standing right there at your side. Watching your beautiful face when you are fast asleep. I've been chasing you. I've been so close plenty of times without you noticing a single thing. Remember those moments when you were almost run over by a car? Those times when you frightenedly woke up without knowing what happened? That was me, experimenting with my capabilities. Those were the moments that I almost got you. I didn't want you dead then, I was just having fun. A year ago, my feelings slowly started to shift. I decided that your time has come. I have been leading up to this night for a long time. That's why I snuck up so many times into your room, to watch the person whose life I'm going to end someday. You might think that this is all a joke, but you can't be further from the truth. 
I can promise you that there will be no tomorrow. Not for you. You've been on this earth for too damn long. So, what am I? Call me your doom. I've been chasing and playing with you for years on end. That time is over. Too often have I let you slip through my fingers. Not tonight. Tonight I'm coming for you, and this time... I will get you. Now I would love to wash this all off as some sort of sick prank or something like that, but how? There simply weren't any logical solutions for this. I don't believe in the supernatural. But if this was just someone trying to scare me or someone who actually want me dead, then how did they come into my house without leaving any trace? Also, it wasn't written in any handwriting that I could recognize. Genuinely scared, I decided to call the police. What the? I had no service. I never, never had any problems with that. Then I realized something. The intruder might still be in the house. I always kept a pretty decent pocket knife in my nightstand. I thought that this was the right moment to grab it. Luckily, it was still there. Shivering but determined, I checked the entire house again with my knife in hand. While I was searching in the living room, my phone buzzed. It scared the freak out of me. I checked it and I saw that I had a text. Hyped about having a signal again, I opened it, ready to call the police immediately after. But I froze. I'm not in the house. Stop wasting your hours. In the bar, where it should say the phone number, it said, Your Doom. I checked my contacts to see if maybe Your Doom had been added through a virus or something. There wasn't any contact by that name. Also, it still said that I had no service. How had the message even arrived? I started sweating heavily. I took a deep breath and I decided that it would be best to just go to bed and go to the police station tomorrow when the sun was up again. I laid the knife under my pillow. After a long time of efforts to calm down... I finally entered a troublous sleep. I awoke to a ticking sound. I froze and I listened. I thought that it must be coming from one of the windows downstairs. I didn't dare move. After a few minutes, the sound suddenly stopped. For a while, it was silent. Then the ticking continued on my bedroom window. In a reflex, I grabbed the knife from under my pillow. Not able to move anymore, I stayed in bed, frightened to the bone, knife in my hands. Then the ticking also started again downstairs. In an uneven rhythm, the ticking was now coming from two places. After around ten minutes, I thought I was going to scream when the ticking suddenly stopped. After that, there was nothing to be heard for almost an hour. Not being able to get a second of sleep, I started getting hungry. With the fear now slowly wearing off, I headed downstairs with my knife, of course. I turned on the lights in the kitchen and I jumped backwards. At the end of the kitchen, where there had been a counter and some windows... There was now something I couldn't describe but as a black void, consisting of nothing but darkness. Before I could think much about what on earth this was, something jumped out of it. It was a creature as black as the night itself. It was shaped a little like a human, but it was something completely different. 
It had pointy claws and razor-sharp fangs. On its back were big black wings. It emerged with a deafening growl. A second later, I was screaming on the ground with this beast on top of me. Out of reflex, I had pointed my knife forwards when it appeared. Now my knife was deep down in its chest at about the place where its heart should be, if it even had one. It was trying to move, but it seemed like the knife had hit its target at a critical spot. It couldn't do much more than wiggle. With all of my force, I rolled it to my side. Still screaming, I jumped upwards. Not long after, the creature stopped moving. I had killed it, whatever the heck it was. Horrified and still shaking violently, I tried to gather myself and pull the knife out of its chest. Was I going insane? Or had a winged black demon really just appeared out of a black void in my kitchen in the middle of the night? I almost started laughing. That changed when I realized that the void was still there, and this was actually very, very real. I was wondering if more would come. Preparing, I took my biggest and sharpest kitchen knife that I had. I barely had it in my hand when the answer came. I heard a howl, like that of a wolf but deeper and darker. The sound reverberated through my bones. Moments later, a big wolf-like creature appeared. It was white and gray and much bigger than a wolf should be. Its back was lined with ice blue spikes. Its eyes were pitch black. It didn't jump at me right away. It just stood there like it was disappointed that I was still alive. Slowly, it approached me with a soft, low growl. It seemed to be careful because of my knife. I growled back at the wolf. Yes, I growled. Not that the wolf seemed to care, though. I was ready to move, expecting the wolf to jump at any moment. It didn't. What it did was way beyond what I expected. It opened its mouth, and a black thing shot out with a tremendous speed. I jumped away, and the thing scratched my shoulder. I looked around, and I saw a black dagger in the wall while my left shoulder was getting red with blood. Not even a second later, I felt claws digging into my back, and only then did I realize my mistake. I had turned my back to the wolf. I had been so shocked by a dagger shooting out of its freaking mouth that I turned my back on the creature. The wolf had taken its chance and was now on my back, probably ready to snap my neck. I started screaming. Then things started getting even weirder. I heard a loud thud. The wolf got off of me, distracted by whatever hit it. I turned around and I saw an arrow sticking out of the wolf's neck. A second later, a dagger hit its neck an inch under the place where the arrow was still stuck. The wolf growled in pain, whereafter it soon collapsed and stopped breathing. Completely in shock, I looked to my left just in time to see a blue portal-like thing disappear behind a man. Or at least it looked like a man. It probably wasn't, but that's besides the point. It was wearing a green cloak with golden lines. In its hand, it held a big wooden bow, and at its hip was a dagger. Never turn your back on them the man said. Baffled and completely confused, I just looked at him, not saying a word. Are you going to keep staring at me like I'm the killer, or are you going to get up? There's more coming, you know. It said. 
More, I asked, completely surprised but still very scared. Yes, that's what I said. Or do you think that they'll make this easy for you? Easy? Yes, easy. Are you going to repeat everything that I say? Uh, right, sorry, I said, trying to gather my wits. Wait, how did you get here in the first place? Not the right question, the man said. Do you want to die? No, I answered, feeling slightly threatened. Then get the frick up and get yourself together, the man said, irritated. Hastily, I stood up. The man took his dagger and handed it to me. I'm blithe. Take this. Where are these things coming from? I asked. While opening his cloak to take a big elf-like sword out, he said, That's a better question, but still irrelevant. Besides, you wouldn't believe me if I told you. What is relevant, however, is that the thing that left the letter for you wants you dead. Now that we killed two of his most valuable servants, it will be most likely that he gets himself here to do the job. Also, he didn't really expect me to show up here. So he'll be extra pissed off. He hates me, you know. He'll probably take this chance to kill both of us himself. He didn't have time to finish his sentence. A deafening roar emerged from the void. I stumbled backwards, moved by the shockwaves. The man didn't budge. Seconds later, a black cloaked figure in the form of a man appeared. Again, it probably wasn't a man, but it kind of looked like it, so yeah. It had no clear face or anything just darkness. I could barely make out its lines against the blackness of the void. Blythe seemed to easily see through him. Before I could blink, he had shot an arrow at the man who reached out and caught the arrow before it hit him. He freaking caught the arrow in midair, just like that. I know I've already seen enough supernatural things tonight, but Still, I was baffled. The black man threw the arrow back with more precision and speed than I've ever seen an arrow being shot with. Blythe already had his sword in hand and sliced the arrow in two. At least I didn't need to doubt his experience, I thought. The black man shot his hand forward and darkness shot out towards Blythe who dodged it while making a roll towards the man. He lashed out with his sword. The man dodged and gave Blythe a punch in the gut, who bent over in pain. All this time, I was just standing there. I knew I had to do something, but what? I didn't even know what that thing could do, or what it was for that matter. Both beings were completely distracted, so I decided to close in. Another punch followed. Before it hit Blythe, he moved his sword. It slashed against the dark figure's hand, who screamed in pain. He opened his other hand, and darkness surrounded Blythe's face, leaving him blinded. He slashed with his sword to protect himself. The creature pulled a black sword out of nothing and stuck it into Blythe. It wasn't a full hit because Blythe's sword partially blocked it. But he was in severe pain nevertheless and he fell to the ground. I was almost behind the dark man, ready to stab him with my dagger, but he turned around too fast. He was facing me. I was terrified beyond my darkest imaginations. Looking into his eyes, or where his eyes must be if he even had them, gave me the feeling that I was already dead. Holding my dagger, there wasn't much more that I could do. Suddenly, the creature moved its sword. It 
did it fast. I barely had time to register it. I still somehow managed to decently dodge it. It scraped against my belly. Then the being screamed. A second later, a sword pierced through its chest. Blythe was standing behind him. Seconds later, his sword turned into black powder, and in shock, he pulled his arm back. Clearly in pain, but still alive, the dark creature turned and his hand shot towards Blythe's gut. A black dagger was sticking out of Blythe's belly. I saw my chance. Before Blythe fell to the ground, I lifted my dagger and I slashed as hard and as fast as I could with all the strength that I could muster. At the last moment, the creature started turning again, but it was too late. I chopped the head off. I literally chopped its head off. The creature's headless body dropped to the ground next to that of Blythe. I checked Blythe for a pulse, but he had none. He was gone. I sat on the ground, totally exhausted and overwhelmed by all that had happened, and I started to cry. I had barely started, however, before the bodies started to fade. Blythe, the dark man, the wolf, and the winged creature, they all started to fade. Even the void started to slowly fade away revealing my counter and my kitchen windows, through which I could see that the sun had started to rise. After lying on the ground for a couple of hours, crying and sleeping, I went upstairs. The envelope and the letter had also faded away, and I had service again on my phone. It was now 1508. This all happened last night, I'm still extremely shocked and exhausted. It looks like it's all over now. I want to talk about it, but I don't dare tell anyone, because who will take it for real? All that's left are the wounds in my shoulder and belly. Even the dagger in the wall and Blythe's weapons have faded. I went to the hospital for my wounds, saying that I had been in a fight. They didn't quite believe it, but what should I have said? This is the only place that I feel that people will believe what happened to me. So, this is where I'm posting.